Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and I am back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we are going to continue our playlist on all about the colors. It is a playlist on our YouTube channel, um, My Shire Farm. If you go to the playlist, which is the third tab over on our main page, it will say a playlist all about the colors. And we are diving into every color and jumbo that we have here at My Shire Farm. And we are giving you all the information that we can to help you understand that specific color. Uh, we are talking about jumbo wilds and uh, pearls and pansies. And today we are going to be discussing two colors. We are going to be discussing the Tibetan, which is our darkest color. And we are also going to be discussing the Tibetan tuxedo. So we are going to be two colors in one today. I will explain why in just a minute. Um, but before I begin, please uh, support our channel and make me feel better by hitting that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you find this helpful or useful or informative, please subscribe to the channel and hit the uh, notification bell uh, because we've got a lot of videos coming your way. I'm really excited about. We've got autumn ambers, uh, we've got scarlets, scarlet tuxedos, snowies, and so much more. After that, we're going to be doing a playlist on a breeding program to help you on your journey and a lot more to come. So I'm really excited about it. So hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, I would greatly appreciate it. If I have not answered your questions in this video or you have different questions, feel free to join me every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because that is when I go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, and we do a live Q&A every Sunday at 7 p.m. You can type in your question. I promise I will get to it. We have a lot of fun. We have about a thousand people that watch a week uh, and we all interact together. We all bounce ideas off of each other. We do some giveaways a couple times a month. Uh, if you've hatched eggs from us, you can feel free to share uh, what your hatch rate was and we discuss it. Um, and we do, we do a lot of fun stuff from all over the world. We have people all over the states, all over the world that join and uh, different perspectives, a lot of fun. I hope you can join us on that. But without further ado and no longer boring you, we are going to talk about the tuxedo. So the tuxedo is a very dark quail. I'll show you this one. This is going to be a future breeder. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, it's only three weeks old. That's why it's so small. Uh, but I do really like the color on this one. Um, I really like a uh, couple patterns on the head. Um, and uh, I really like, um, there's certain things about it that I really like. So as long as it may, makes weight uh, for what my standard is on Tibetans. Uh, it will be a future breeder, so I'm very excited about that. And then let me show you the Tibetan tuxedo. This is actually one of our current breeders. Uh, it is quite large. This is one of the largest ones I had in there. I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, she just kind of likes to eat, and I was right around the food. Uh, but as you can see, it is very, ooh, very dark on the back. And then the wings and the chest is all white. That would make it a tuxedo. And because of the markings on the back and how dark it is, that would be a Tibetan. So it is a Tibetan tuxedo. This is what I consider a true tuxedo. The reason I say that is because the wing pattern is white and the chest is all white. There's no breakage. Also, uh, the neck is white. So this is what I would consider a true tuxedo. Um, so we're gonna be talking about both of those and kind of comparing them as far as the numbers go. So here we go. All right, so we've already discussed what they look like. They are both uh, not feather sexable. You have to vent sex them which means you can tell male from female at about six to eight weeks. Um, they are not feather sexable. Um, so you won't be able to tell the difference between a male and female until you vent sex. I do have a couple videos on how to vent sex uh, that should be helpful if you wanna check that out. Um, average weight. Our average weight on our Tibetans, pure Tibetans, is between nine and nine and a half ounces. Now, at one point in time, 
a few years ago, we actually had them averaging between 10 and a half and 11 ounces and we had jumbo Tibetans. They are very inconsistent. Um, so we brought the weight back down uh, to nine to nine and a half ounces and um, they're much more consistent, but there's a lot, of, lot more benefits to that. Uh, I've seen their average lifespan and production go up. I've seen their production in egg volume go way up. Uh, they seem to be much happier, much healthier. They're living longer, uh, and it's an, uh, on average a larger egg size. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. So our average size now is nine to nine and a half, and we will not try to be making them, them jumbos. Now, the Tibetan tuxedos uh, are around 8.7 to nine ounces. Uh, so much smaller gap as far as the average goes, um, but it is a little bit lower. Uh, it's about a standard size, I would say. Uh, the average egg size for our Tibetans, pure Tibetan, our average egg size is eight and a half to nine and a half grams. Whereas our average egg size for our t tuxedo Tibetans is um, eight to eight and a half grams. So around the same amount, about a half a gram difference. Um, hatching true percentage for our Tibetan is 85 to 90%. That means 85 to 90 out of every 100 that hatch out will be Tibetan. Let's talk about that for a second. What else would hatch out? So the other 10 to 15% would hatch out either Rosetta, Faro, possibly a Tuxedo, possibly a Pure White. Again, all of those are pretty rare anyway because it's such a high uh, hatching true percentage, okay? Now, hatching true percentage on our Tibetan tuxedos are a little bit different. Um, those are 70 to 75%, so that's quite a bit lower. Now, what you can get from uh, tuxedo, Tibetan tuxedo hatching eggs would be whites, pure Tibetans, just straight Tibetans, no tuxedo, uh, Rosetta, and possibly a pharaoh. Mainly it would be between the pure Tibetan and the pure white, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Now, how to get the color started. Uh, as far as the Tibetan goes, um, you really just need to start with it. Now, with the Tibetan, you can work with it to get many different colors. You can get the Rosetta color, which we have not discussed, but that is my next video, so stay tuned for that. And that's another reason why you will want to subscribe to the channel, because Rosettas are next. Uh, but with T Tibetans, you can make ro uh, Rosettas. Um, you can make Grau Fees, uh, which we've already done a video on. Uh, and there's a couple other things that you can do with them, uh, but you kind of just need to start with the Tibetan. Now, with the Tibetan tuxedo, uh, you can actually make this, okay? So, with that being said, uh, the best way to make Tibetan tuxedos is to actually use Tibetan, Tibetan hens, <laughs> sorry, Tibetan hens over white males, pure white English males. Um, that will start producing uh, kind of like a panda at first, and then eventually you'll get to this. And then we actually breed tuxedo to tuxedo. I know other breeders and other people say not to do that. Always leave it, uh, you know, Tibetan over white or white over Tibetan. I don't like that. I find the best results to get a pure, real tuxedo is to do tuxedo to tuxedo. Uh, but how to get that color would be tuxedo hens over white males, and uh, eventually you'll start getting tuxedos out of it, which is a lot of fun. Once you get enough, then you'll breed tuxedo to tuxedo, and they'll just start filling in more and more. Uh, so I hope that helps with that. Uh, average lifespan on our pure Tibetans, our true Tibetans, all Tibetan, is two years and three months. It is one of, one of our longest lasting quail as far as production goes. Now, obviously, they do, li they do live longer than that, but as far as production goes, uh, it's about two years and three months before it declines rapidly. Uh, the average egg 
production is between 320 and 300 eggs a year, 300 to 320 eggs a year. The first year on average is 320, the second year is 300, so it is a very, very productive Tibetan, uh, and that is probably why it's one of our biggest sellers, because the egg production is one of the best. Um, as far as the Tibetan tuxedos go, the average lifespan is above normal. It's two years and one month, uh, and it's between 280 and 290 eggs a year. So they are both very, very productive quail, which is really nice. Uh, and then the last part is the hatch rate. So the average hatch rate on shipped eggs for our t Tibetans is 72%. Our average hatch rate on Tibetan tuxedos is 71%. Um, we're averaging a 73% for the entire year. So that is all of our information about our Rosettas and Rosetta tuxedos. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. I hope that uh, it encourages you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. And uh, remember to hit that like button. And remember, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live right here on our YouTube channel to answer any questions that we might not have answered already. I hope to see you there. Until then, stay safe and God bless.